Hello, everyone, and. This is Asia, and here's Mongolia. Now let's take a look, shall we? Landlocked between Russia and China, Mongolia is a nation straddled by titans, but is also itself a country of vastness and epic sweep, encapsulating wide, broad, unending steppes, horizons of grassland, along with forbidding stretches of desert, green forests, and lonesome mountains. Sporting such a plethora of big open spaces, it is no surprise that Mongolia is a horse's paradise. Indeed, there are more horses than people in the nation today, nor is it surprising that for thousands of years humans and horses have been inseparable in this place. Now in the 3rd century BC, the varying nomadic tribes of the land banded together and became known as the Shounu. So terrible were their attacks on China that the first emperor, Qin Shi Huang, ordered the construction of a great wall to keep them out. Not much remains of these ancient walls. The famous structure we see today dates mostly to the Ming Dynasty, more than a thousand years after the first emperor. Now Han Dynasty China eventually got sick of all the Shounu attacks and took the fight to them and won. It is thought that the Shonnu who migrated westward became the Huns who terrorized the ailing Roman Empire. Anyway, the confederation was broken and replaced in the first century by a new state, the Shenbei, who also attacked China. After them came the first folk to call themselves Khan, the leaders of the Roran Khanate, who ruled until the 500s, when the steppes of Asia were conquered by the Gurktuks, whose Turkic descendants, like the Huns, traveled west and shook the world. The Gurktuks also attacked China, so the Chinese of the Tang Dynasty struck back and defeated them. The area subsequently fell to the Turkic Uyghur Khanate for nearly a century. Yet another Turkic state took over after them, and then we witnessed the rise of the Kitan Miao dynasty. Sorry, the Kitan Liao dynasty. They also attacked China, but were defeated by the Jin Dynasty in 1125. This same century saw the gradual rise of the people we've all been waiting for, the Mongols. The Mongol tribes were unified by a man who became one of the most influential human beings in all history, Chinggis Khan, or Genghis or Genghis Khan as we say in English, a military genius of the first order. Genghis Khan's Mongol warriors, seated atop their strong, sturdy, stocky steeds, went forth and conquered, and conquered, and conquered. History had never seen so large an empire as that of the Mongols, stretching from Korea to Ukraine. Many extraordinary victories were won by Genghis's loyal general, Subutai, one of the most accomplished of history's commanders, or Gode Khan, took over after Genghis and further expanded Mongol domains, as did Mung Khan and Kublai Khan, as we say in English. And we must observe, the Mongols also attacked China and actually managed to conquer it completely under Kublai Khan, setting up the Yuan dynasty. Italian merchant Marco Polo traveled to Mongol-ruled China and spent nearly 20 years there, employed by the emperor as a diplomat. In the famous book he later wrote, he describes Kublai Khan's immense wealth and the opulence of his court. He also described his physical appearance for us, noting that he was of middle stature with a becoming amount of flesh, very shapely in all his limbs. He also made a special point of noting that the emperor possessed a very lovely nose. The Yuan dynasty lasted until the mid-1300s, when the Chinese rebelled and pushed them out. Mongol rule continued up in the northern Yuan dynasty, in which time the Mongolian people followed their leaders and adopted Buddhism as their religion. Skipping ahead to the 1600s, we find Mongolia swallowed up into the Manchu-run Qing dynasty of China. The Manzu or Manchu people were descended from the Nyuchen or Jurchen people, who were descended from another ancient northern nomadic people. In short, the glory days of the Mongols were over. The glory days of the Qing dynasty were over too, and as it collapsed, the Mongolians declared independence in 1911. In the years that followed, China was engulfed in confusion, with various warlords carving up pieces to rule. One of these warlords decided to take Mongolia in 1919. But in 1921's revolution, Mongolian communists, with the help of Soviet Russia, pushed the Chinese out. Marshal Chuybelsen here led the nation from 1939 to 52. A great buddy to Stalin, he emulated his Soviet pal's pastime of eliminating all opponents, real or imagined, killing tens of thousands of his own people, many of them Buddhist priests whose monasteries he destroyed. The Soviets also helped the Mongolians defend their country from Japanese invasion during World War II. Yumjagan Setan Dumbel led the nation for many years until 1984. After the the Cold War, Mongolia adopted a new constitution and tiptoed into a market economy, and the country today has attained a high level of human development. As you can see from these pictures of the capital, the country has changed a lot since ancient times, though not entirely, as many Mongolians continue to live in the same wind-free manner as their ancestors. What awaits Mongolia in the years ahead? Comment below, but for now, bye bye <laughs>